Hola, ¿qué tal amigos? ¿Cómo están ustedes? This is Professor Pablo. Buenos días, buenas tardes y buenas noches. No importa la hora que sea, siempre es un gran momento para aprender español con Learn Spanish Fast. Rápido, rapidísimo con Professor Pablo. In our prior lesson, you all saw the graphic, my original graphic that I created to show you the Spanish verb universe. Contrary to popular belief, there are not millions of verb conjugations and verb tenses and such. There are only 10 things that you can do to a verb. Now this chart here in front of us shows you the verb numbering system that I created. Being that there are only 10 things you can do to a verb, they are here in numerical order. And you will notice as we go from zero to nine, we go from the very most basic, which is the infinitive, unconjugated form of the verb. We go all the way up to nine, which is the most complex form of the verb, the past subjunctive. Numerically speaking, I will introduce at some point what I call a verb quotient. That is, you take all the verbs in your sentence and you assign a numeric value as shown here in the chart. You can divide those verbs by how many you have and that will give you an average, right? And when you look at that average, that will tell you if your Spanish is beginning, intermediate, advanced intermediate, advanced, beginning advanced, it'll tell you what level your Spanish is at. But I'm telling you right now, if you want to get up into the sky, reach to the heights, look at the blue, the present subjunctive and the past subjunctive, right? That is the most complex form of Spanish sentences in our Spanish language. So but let's go back now. Zero is the infinitive, which is beautiful. It's perfect. You don't have to change it. It's perfect as is. One, the present participle, that's the ing form of the verb. Take trabajar, take the ar off and add ando. Trabajando, working. Comer, comiendo. Leer happens to be a y verb in the ing. It is leyendo, l-e-y-e-n-d-o. You know why there's a y in leyendo? Because in Spanish, we don't like to have three vowels together. So instead of L-E-I-E-N-D-O, they change it to a Y-E-N-D-O, leyendo. That's your present participle. It's used with the verb estar, like it is raining, está lloviendo. It was raining for two hours, estuvo lloviendo por dos horas. It was raining when I got up, estaba lloviendo cuando me levanté, cuando me desperté. Number two is the past participle. They end in ado, ido, ado, or ido. They are the equivalent of the English ed. Studied, worked, purchased, transferred, painted. Okay, that is the past participle. The past participle is used hand in hand with the verb haber, which is an auxiliary verb. We'll get to that. That's where we had the a, as, a, Amos on with an H, a silent H in the beginning. Example, it has rained, ha llovido. I have worked a lot this week. He trabajado mucho esta semana. Number three, that's our buddy. That's our number one friend right there, the present indicative. Why do they call it indicative? Because it indicates what you do or what happens in the present tense. We give it a numeric value of three, the present tense. We know there are stem-changing verbs. Things happen in all but nosotros. You remember the A, B, N lessons. We know that there are also some irregulars like estoy, boy, soy, and doy, right? There are some quirky things that happen in the present tense, but it is so critical to learn the present tense. Next, we have the past preterite. We just recently completed the car, gar, zar verbs. Those were our last three lessons of the preterite. Yes, the preterite does have irregulars. Yes, the preterite does have some stem changing. Yes, the preterite does have some Y verbs. But you learn those because you hear them often. And guess what? The language learning module takes over. So the whole left side, we've hit it and we've hit it hard. Zero, infinitive. One, present participle, the ing. Two, the ed, the past participle. Three, the present tense. And four, the past preterite. Now, number five, the right-hand column in green, 
The past imperfect is the second of two past tenses in Spanish. The preterite is used for a completed past action, the past imperfect for an incomplete past action. Now, that probably doesn't mean a lot to you now, but it will make sense as we study the past imperfect. You use the imperfect to describe how things used to be, what someone used to look like, things that you would always do, that you used to do all the time as a kid. When you reminisce how something was, that is the imperfect. Number six is simple. That's the future. In English, when we say will, that's the future tense. Now, guess what? The future tense, along with number seven, the conditional, they are the two easiest tenses to conjugate in Spanish. Because why? Because you take our Mona Lisa, you take the infinitive, zero, right? And all you do is you add either a, as, a, amos, or on. In the description to the right of number seven, or number six, future, you can see the verb endings there, right? So, llover, if I want to say it will rain, I take the infinitive and add an a with an accent. Llovera. I will go to school tomorrow. Mañana yo iré, I-R-E with an accent. Iré a la escuela mañana. We will go to the beach. Iremos a la playa. There are a few irregulars, but guess what? The ones that are irregular in the future are the same exact ones that are irregular in the conditional. So the future and the conditional, they're like Siamese twins. They're identical twins, right? So the conditional, what is that for? If the future is will, what you will do, the conditional is what you would do, what you would do today or tomorrow or next year or in the future. If you want to say what you would do in the past, like, I would always drink milk, well, that's imperfect. Siempre tomaba leche. I would always play baseball out in the street. Siempre jugaba baseball en la calle. I always used to watch cartoons. Siempre miraba or veía las caricaturas. That's the past imperfect. But if you want to say would, what you would do, like, I would go if I had the money, iría si tuviera el dinero. Now you hear that tuviera, that tuviera is the number nine, that's a past subjunctive. All right, let's go down to number eight. The present subjunctive, the first of the two blues. You're going to find out that the present subjunctive is incredibly popular. It's used all the time, but you have to have advanced level speaking skills to be able to use it correctly. And the present subjunctive basically is a mirror image of the present tense. Yes, it's just like the present tense. Now get this. So for present tense AR verbs, right? Predominantly we have an A in the ending. In the present subjunctive for AR verbs, now we're gonna have an E vowel, what we call the opposite vowel. In the present tense for ER and IR verbs, we predominantly have the letter E for our verb ending. Well, guess what? In the present subjunctive, when you go to an ER or an IR verb, now the ending is going to be the letter A, as you can see in the description to the right of the circle with the eight inside of it. Okay, the present subjunctive is for things like, uh, I want you to come. Quiero que vengas a la fiesta. I need for you to help me. Necesito que me ayudes. You already know how to say ayudas, present tense. Me ayudas, you help me. Change the A to an E and bingo, you're in. Necesito que me ayudes. But, you're going to find out that the present subjunctive is based on the yo form of the present tense. So that's where you get your go verbs like ago, digo, pongo, salgo, caigo, traigo, vengo, right? The conozco and the traduzco, the ZC verbs. The present subjunctive is based on the yo form of the present tense. That is why we have absolutely beat to death the present tense, okay? We'll get to the present subjunctive. And number nine, the past subjunctive, if you want to be able to use a past subjunctive verb, right, you have to know number four, the past preterite, because the past subjunctive is based on the eos form, the n factor form of the past preterite. The example we gave with the Spanish verb universe, um, I hoped that we would win. I was hoping that we would win. Both of those translate the same. Esperaba imperfect, which is a five, K ganaramos. Where did that ganaramos come from? Easy. Take the aeos form of the preterite, ganaron, they all end in N, you know that, the N factor, 
you change the O in front of the N to an A, and bingo, you've got ganaran, and from that you base all the five conjugations. Esperaba que ganáramos. Okay? I wanted for it to rain. Quería, that's an imperfect, five, K. Yo viera. You hear the K in the middle. We're going to teach you to think of a car towing a trailer, a vehicle towing a trailer. That vehicle is going to be in the present tense, the preterite, or the imperfect. The trailer hitch to tow a trailer is always the word K, and then your trailer is either going to be an 8 or a 9, present subjunctive or past subjunctive. So again, this is not a lesson. This is simply an introduction to our verb numbering system. Numbers facilitate things. Everything has a number on it. Look at products when you buy something. There are numbers on everything to identify. And we're using numbers here. We're only using 10 numbers, 0 through 9, to identify the total possibility of what you can do to a verb. All right, to summarize. 0 is infinitive. It's beautiful. One is the present participle, the, a, the, the ing form, ando yendo. Two is the past participle, the ado ido, the ed form. Three is the present tense. Four is the past preterite. Five is the upcoming imperfect. Six is the future will. Seven is the condition of would, what you would do today, tomorrow, or in the future. Eight and nine, present and past subjunctive. We will explain how to use those. But we gave you a little introduction. Hopefully this gets you motivated. And let me tell you right now, we've done two charts. These two charts represent two of the more than 500 pages in Professor Pablo's Spanish learning system. For our YouTube listeners, you can go to ProfessorPablo.com. Put in the promo code. Pablo 50, Pablo, P-A-B-L-O 5-O, and that will be your promo code, and you can get the whole system for 50% off, resulting in a total cost of $15. It has everything. It has all the sentence starters, vocabulary, grammar, dialogues, topics, verb dictionary, survival Spanish, vocabulary, uh, useful everyday sayings, over 500 pages. It'll be the best $15 that you've ever spent on an educational purpose. So that's it. That's all we got today. Es todo por ahora. Hasta pronto. This is your Professor Pablo signing off. Cambio fuera. Colorín colorado. Este cuento se ha acabado. Bye.